right, Bar Naturals Prayers. Talk to the people, man. Let them know what's getting ready to go down. Yo, what's good, YouTube? We back with the prayers. Back with good money, you already know. Today we're going to bring you beginning calisthenic routine. So listen, this is going to be for someone who's just getting into the calisthenics, trying to build up their body weight strength. Doesn't matter if you came from the gym or not. Listen, calisthenics is a different ball game. You got to have body awareness. You got to have stability, coordination. So listen, I always, I'm, you guys know I always preach full body training. I always treat, preach health, healthy shoulders. You guys should be training your shoulders. And 95% of my programs, you're going to see shoulder work, uh, work involved first. Either if it's with dumbbells, bands, some type of isolation movement. But now listen, if you're just getting into calisthenics, first time beginner, and you're trying to learn the movements and get your body awareness down, listen, you don't got to worry about those isolation movements with your shoulders. What you want to do is build a solid base. So the first thing I would recommend everyone doing it's just some stretching and mobility for their shoulders. Get a band. Simple. I do this before every routine. So, just get a band. Straight arms. Now look, don't, right, don't mind my right arm. Just focus on my left arm. Look, my right arm is injured. I have a video up on my channel looking at it. So look at my right arm now. It doesn't lock out. So, if, look. You're going to want to get a band. Want, put your arms in front of you. Get some resistance on All you want to do, rotations. And watch. Arms stay straight the whole time and you continuously pull the band for tension. This is for shoulder health, shoulder mobility, and it's also going to build a little bit of shoulder strength. Listen, if you're building up shoulder stability, you're building up shoulder strength too. So just get comfortable at rotating with a band. Now listen, you guys may grab a band. This is a, a black band. It has, some, it has some decent resistance to it. You may not be able to first get your arms around. The first time you do it, your arms may bend. Don't do it. Find a lighter band and find a, find a band where you can pull it wider and pull it as far as you can. Listen, bands are always gonna allow you to pull them. So find the lightest resistance band possible, make sure your arms stay straight, and always work this range of motion first. Clean rotation, straight arm, from the waist, in front, all the way down to the lower back. Regardless of the, like I said, this is a heavy band, that's what I'm able to use, but if it's too heavy for you, find a lighter band and work those rotations. Main movement you guys should be working for shoulder warm up, especially if you're a beginner. Next thing you guys want to work on, like I said, usually you would see me doing some type of isolation, side lateral raises, rear face pulls on the, pull, on the bar, which you've seen in my shoulder videos before. But like said, if you're a beginner, you want to build a strong base, solid foundation. So, all I'm going to recommend, let me get my gloves. And besides training your shoulders, this is also going to train your full body, it's going to activate the full body. So. Like I said, we're not going to do any isolations. Like I said, we're in the park. We don't even have any equipment with us besides the band today, right? So what we're going to do, all we're going get, to get, get good at as a beginner is holding this plank position. Push-up plank. Getting strong just like this. Holding like this is going to build all stability in the arm, the shoulder joint, everything. And besides that, it's going to teach you body awareness and hold that line. You don't want your hips to be sunk like this. You don't want your ass up. Everything tight in alignment, just like this. Shoulders stacked over the hands. You want to get good. You want to be able to hold one minute planks. That's a basic exercise you guys should all be working towards. One minute planks for a beginner. And do those in the beginning of your exercise, like, like I said, beginning of the routine. It's going to warm your whole body up because everything's going to be engaged. It's going to really target those the delts too. After those rotations, your shoulders are going to be feeling a nice pump. Hit those planks, get comfortable with that, build a good, a good strong base. Like I said, calisthenics is if you want to get good at it and build a nice physique it's repetition after repetition of a lot of basics listen i've been doing it for nine ten years now and the brood of my the brunt of my training is always dips pull-ups push-ups and squats the basics the muscle-ups are now basic for me too because i've been doing it for so long but i don't even do them that often everything is dips pulls pushes squats the main staples of calisthenics you're going to have to continuously get better and better at them by getting better at reps and adding weight over time. So, once you get good at those planks, you guys want to start practicing. Again, calisthenics is a lot of body awareness. It's full body move, even though you're not doing full body exercises like a deadlift or overhead press where everything's engaged with weight onto you, everything has to be engaged in calisthenics or else you're going to look sloppy. So you want to be able to, be, to build up to this L-sit. This L-sit is a staple beginner movement that everybody should master. And, you, and it, obviously an L-sit should be a full L-sit looking like this. But a beginner is not going to be able to hold that. A beginner is going to start just like this. And again, it's going to come back to building that shoulder, that arm stability, that shoulder strength. Also, it's going to build tricep strength, chest strength. Because again, 
you're constantly flexed in isometric position, stabilizing yourself. Core engagement is going to build that body awareness and that body tension that you need throughout every calisthenic exercise. So, all you want to get good at, after you get good at planks, get good at tucked L sits. Now, in the, if you're a beginner, you may only get your legs up to here, that's fine, just hold. It's this, it's this motion right there of holding your body in a support hold. You're supporting your body by your arms and your shoulder joint. It doesn't matter if your legs are bent and your arms are or your legs are straight. If you can't even bend, bend your legs up as a beginner, get used to holding just like this. A dip support hold. This is gonna be a movement that you're gonna be, a position that you're gonna be in a lot. If you're doing dips, you're gonna be like this. If you're doing push-ups, you're gonna be locked out. If you're doing muscle-ups, you're gonna be in this dip support hold. It's a staple position in calisthenics. And again, it's total body awareness. I don't have my legs locked out like out like that. I'm not, I'm not flared out. Everything is always in a line. So whether I'm in the beginner variation where I'm just straight like this, whether I'm half tucked, my feet are always together. Whether I'm fully tucked, my feet are always together. Whether I'm in a full L, everything always in that line. You want to get used to keeping your body together. That's how calisthenics builds full body awareness and full body tension. So once you get good, like I said, these would be the shoulder, basically the shoulder focused exercises that I would teach a beginner to focus on. I won't have you doing side lateral raises to start, shoulder presses to start, pike push-ups to start. If you're really just coming to the park and you got no body awareness and you're like all over the place, these are the exercises that you want to really get good at. Holding that line, understanding how to keep your body tight and tense and controlled. So, besides that, like I said, like I said, 95% of my training for the past nine, 10 years is always pull-ups, push-ups, dips. They're the staple exercise that you always gotta keep in your routine. So, once you get good at planks, l sit holds, now you wanna start training the push and the pull and the leg movements of calisthenics, which is the basics, like I said, push-ups, dips, pull-ups, and squats. So, if you're a beginner, obviously you're gonna be using bands. Well, if you're an absolute beginner, you may not have any strength to do any of these movements besides holding an L-sit and holding a plank. Now, holding an L-sit is gonna build that strength that you need to be able to do dips. You may be able to do push-ups at first, but if you come to the park as a beginner, you may not have that strength and body awareness to understand how to bring your body down in that dip motion. So, the first movement everybody should master in calisthenics, besides um, the planks and the L-sits, now you wanna move to your push-ups. Your first pushing movement should be mastering push-ups. You don't really need a band, you don't really need much help to do them, and if you do need help to do them, you don't need to have any extra equipment. You can always just go to higher surfaces. So, look, if you can't do push-ups on the floor, If you can't do push-ups on a bench yet, if this is too high for you. Now look, the higher your body goes in a diagonal, the less gravity that's gonna be hitting you overall. So when you're flat on the floor, now you have gravity over your entire body. That's the hardest position of the push-up. Actually, the hardest push-up position would be feet up, down like this on a decline, because now the majority of gravity is directly over your chest because it's, it's lower than your feet more gravity here. So if you're, that'll be the hardest, then we go straight on the floor. And then as you start adding an incline to it, now look, the majority of gravity is down here, not as much on my upper chest, on my upper back, pushing down on my chest. And when you go higher like this, look, not much gravity pushing down on my upper, my upper back at all, forcing more, uh, less stress on the chest. So if you can't rep out on the floor, you just raise the surfaces higher and higher and higher until you get comfortable at doing push-ups. And then slowly, you go to lower position. So look, we'll start on this. You can't start on the floor, and your level is the dip bar. We'll start on the dip bar. Then from there, look, we come slightly lower. We got the back of a bench, a little lower than the dip bar. Now look, I'm a little lower on an incline. Then I'll get used to doing push-ups here. Once that gets easy, look, I'll find this a little higher. I'll come on something like this. I'll do push-ups just like this, a little higher. Even and look, it's a different grip. Now I'm closer but I'm still on an incline. Once you get good like that, now you start working lower. Now look, you got a bench. Bench is lower than there. Now the push-ups will slightly get a little bit harder. Once you get good on that surface, now you can start moving to the floor. So the first exercise, like I said, you, gotta, you guys wanna learn the basics. Practice your push-ups as your first push movement 
Don't even worry about dipshit. Your basic push exercise for calisthenics, if you can't do dipshit and you're just starting out and you're just learning all these movements, get good at push-ups. Once you get good at push-ups, I'm gonna assume if you can't do push-ups yet, if you can't do dipshit and you're just learning these push-up movements, you guys are 99% not gonna be able to do a pull-up or a chin-up. That's when we're gonna start using assistance. So let's go. So for the first beginner who can't, who got no bands, nothing, let's find another pull-up bar, low like this. All we gotta do, this is simple guys, look. This is how you're gonna, we're gonna work eccentric reps now. Negative reps to build strength to do a movement we can't do. So let's say this is your guys' level for a pull-up, ready? You got, you're at the park, you got all these bars here. You go to do a pull-up. That's all you got, right? You can't get past that part. Why? So that means you got no strength from this range to here. You got no strength there. So how do you build strength? You, I would tell you guys, negatives build strength. Find a low bar. Look, all I got to do now, my chin's already over the bar. I'm already in that pull-up position and I'm on the floor still. So now look, come, let go, drop down. Hold, drop down. Drop down. Now, you're working the same range of motion as a pull-up. You're coming from the top and you're working the negative down. And even if you can't, look, even in the beginning, look, I'm gonna control it down slow right now, right? Slow, and that's not even as slow as I could go, that's just slow to demonstrate. Even in the beginning, if you guys come like this and drop down like that, listen, it's still gonna build that negative strength and over time and you keep doing it, you're gonna build body control. Look, you do that two or three times by the fourth set, your body's gonna understand, all right, I'm not gonna drop that fast. Let me engage these muscle fibers, let me control myself down. It's teaching your body the movement. Your body just has to understand what it's doing and to learn the movement better. So, if you guys have a low bar, this is the best movement you guys could, best exercise you guys could train for pull up. Hold, come down. Now, once you guys get comfortable with that, or if you guys don't have a low bar, this is what you guys could do. You can find yourself some bands. Where's my band at? You can find yourself some bands. So, you're gonna use band assisted for pulls. Now, all you're gonna do is you're gonna find a pull up bar. It could be, you don't wanna use a short one because now you wanna be able to get your legs down. You wanna be able to get a full extension with your legs down. So I'm actually gonna use this one to demonstrate. You know what? I'm gonna use this one to demonstrate because with this bar, you need no help. You can do it with a bar this height on your own. All you're gonna do, look, loop the band. Because the first thing you got to do now is pull this band down. If you have a partner or you have somebody with you, it's, e it's better off and easier to do it on a high bar. Because then all you got to do is jump on the bar and then have somebody put the band in your feet. But if you're, if you're here by yourself in the park by yourself, find a bar about this high, pull the band down first, and then jump, grab on the bar just like this. And now look, two feet in the band, and now this band is going to give me resistance up. It's going to pull my body up. So now look, if I can't do a pull up, now look. This band is gonna throw me up, so I'm gonna demonstrate it on the high bar too. And again, you, you guys can get in it yourself. It'll just be easier for you to use a lower bar. But the same thing, watch. Loop the band, wrap it around your foot, step on the band down, and then jump up, and then put both feet in. So now look, I'm hanging down, go to pull up, the band's pulling me up. Because as you go up, the band is giving you that resistance to pull you up. It's assisting you on the way up, because look, look what happens. The band shoots up, right? That's the tension in the band, ready? The band shoots up, so when you're, when you're on the band, that band is shooting you up, just like that. That's how bands work. Tension is built as you pull it down, and then when you come up, you're pulling up and the band is going up together. It's generating that momentum to get your body over the bar. So the first two moves you guys wanna practice, push-ups, pull-ups pull-ups as well as chin-ups too. Listen, I'm saying pull-ups first because everyone tends to be stronger in a chin-up because they ain't more bicep engagement. But when you're getting into calisthenics and you start like watching the sport, everyone's, the main movement is a pull-up. More back engagement, better overall muscle, better overall movement for muscle development as well. So chin-ups though, once you get good at, once you start practicing pull-ups, you gotta start practicing chin-ups too because you gotta have a balance. You don't wanna just have 
strong pulling muscles this way and not and have weak biceps. Remember, all these movements are gonna train your arms. Dips, push-ups, train your triceps, pull-ups, chin-ups are gonna train your biceps. So now, same thing. If you guys can't do a chin-up yet, first thing you want to do, back to this low bar. Pull, all you're doing is jumping to your chins over the bar, controlling it down. Controlling it down. Same thing with a band. Go. Put your feet in the band. Jump up. Feet, hands are supinated. And pull up and right back down. Now, if you guys are just learning calisthenics and you're just mastering the push-ups and the pull and the pull-ups, keep those two movements as your only main staples. You don't even gotta focus on dips yet. Listen, dips just another put is just another pushing movement. You're gonna target almost the same muscle groups doing push-ups. Chest, shoulders, del uh, delts, um, core, everything. Same thing when you're doing dips. De dips are gonna ch target chest, tricep, delts, same, same muscles. So, they're just a harder variation than doing a push-up. So, if all your level is pull-ups and, pu and uh, push-ups and pull-ups, listen, you guys wanna focus on routines that are, get, that are gonna build up your strength and endurance in these reps. So one of my favorite routines that I would do as a beginner is, is pyramid sets. Now you could do them using the band. If you can't do pull-ups yet, and you could just do push-ups, use the band. So a set would be, you would come, do your warm-up, your band rotations, your plank holds, or your L sets, whatever you choose to do for the day. From there, first movement you would do, like I said, it's just gonna be, this is gonna be a push-pull routine. It's gonna be a pyramid-style circuit to build up strength and endurance in these muscles. So all it's gonna be is simple. I said pyramid style. Pyramid means you can either pyramid up in numbers or pyramid down or do an up, uh, uh, pyramid up and then down. So that's what we're gonna do today as a beginner. We're gonna pyramid up and then down. That's gonna be our goal. So it's gonna start just like this. One push up. And we're gonna do pull ups to demonstrate today. One pull up. Right back out. Two. Two. Three. Three. So now, let's say this is set eight. And now, I'm on eight push-ups. One, two, four, ah, ah, ah. So, that eight was hard, right? Eight was probably my max push-ups on that set for the day. So what we're gonna do now, back to the band. eight pull-ups, and that would be our number. Because now if we drop back down to do nine push-ups, we would most likely fail mid-set and not hit that number. So that's how you work a pyramid set. Now let's think of it as, okay, I did eight push-ups easy, but now I was on eight pulls instead. I hit the eight push-ups, but now I'm on the pulls and fail on the eight pulls, it's the same thing. That's where you're stopping. Whatever you fail on first, whether, whether, whether it's the push or the pull, that's where you stop. So you pyramid it up to that number. Now you have to pyramid back down. So for instance, we made it to eight push-ups, eight pull-ups. Now I gotta work my way back down. So the next set, right away, I'll rest a minute, two minutes, and then right away, I'll go back. Now I'm doing seven. Seven. back down to one. And so now you know in your head, this session I made it to eight and down. So next time you come and you do this routine, you gotta make it a, your business to get to nine. You gotta get to nine push-ups or nine pulls, whatever number you failed at, you do one number better or however many numbers better you could do, and then you work down. That's how you're gonna notice yourself making progress. Pyramid, pyramid routines are great ways to measure progress. 
And so once you get good at these push-ups and pulls, the next move you're gonna wanna learn is these dips. So once you get a good push-up, base of strength, doing push-ups, and you could rep probably a nice 15, 20 push-ups on the floor easily, now it's time to learn some dips. Now again, like I said, training those L sits, even if, even if you're only training them tucked, is gonna train the main muscles that you're gonna need to do a dip. You're gonna have that strength now in the locked out position. What you may fail on is the negative, is the eccentric part of a dip. So this is what dips are supposed to look like. Right? Okay, so we already have this strength, this locked out dip support strength. Whether we do tucked holes, straight arm, straight leg, dip support holes, we're building that strength to have the base to do a dip. Now all we gotta do is do a dip. So we can start by trying it. How, all right, I'm gonna tell you what you don't do when doing a dip, okay? What you don't do when doing a dip is roll your shoulders back. Listen, a common cue you'll hear in bodybuilding or in lifting weights is head up, chest up, shoulders back. That's a cue you're gonna use when doing bench press exercises, flying motions. If you're doing a row, you always wanna retract your shoulders and extenuate your chest up, right? That's the opposite of doing a dip. When doing a dip, you almost, you wanna be rounded in that round hollow body position in almost that disadvantaged position, that internally rotated position. So you do not wanna be back like this when doing a dip. You do not want your shoulders rolled back. That's number one. This is how you wanna start a dip. So again, so training those L sits, put your shoulders in optimal position for, for a dip. Now look, you don't train an L sit with your shoulders back like that. You train them just like that. Perfect position, just like that. So that's why I said L sits are gonna build that base strength that you need for dips. So if you're trying to learn them, what are you gonna do? The first time you're gonna do it, I'm gonna tell you, let me see you try to do a dip. Come up here, all you're doing, bending at the elbows and coming up, coming down and coming up. Listen, we're not bending from the traps. We're not letting our traps drop. So look, and you, if you guys watched my shoulder video, you guys have noticed I did these shrugs. Just like this, right? This is a weak position. This is a strong position. This is all the way depressed, all the way locked out, right? So you never want to depress. You don't ever want to depress your shoulders when doing dips. So a lot of com a common mistake I see people doing when doing dips is this. They'll come up, and the first thing they'll do is they'll depress here, and then they'll come down. Now look, this is how I ended up. So my traps are all in my ears. Listen, this is what a dip's supposed to look like. All it is, is shoulder extension and your elbows coming up. So when you're in a dip like this, look, this is the end position of a dip, right? Here. So now if I just got off the bar, look what my arms are, just like that. So if you can't do dips, this is a drill that I teach all my beginners, ready? You're gonna come, to, come between a uh, dip bar, parallel bar. All you're gonna do, arms at your side, raise them just like this. Palms pointed down, flex straight, like you're gonna give somebody a handshake. All you're gonna do, ready? Here. You're gonna expose your arms down, just like this, but you're gonna do it to the dip bar. What that's gonna do is, throw your arms down, it's gonna generate momentum to bring your body up. So ready, watch. Back, and every time you come, you wanna drop, and re-bring your arms up. Because remember, this is the end position, this is the bottom position of a dip. Remember, if I was to just, all I gotta do now is bend my torso, touch the bar, and I'm in a negative dip to lock out, right? So, here, Shoot down, back down. First thing you guys can practice. But like I said, the first thing I would have you guys do is try a dip. So what I told you not to do, roll your shoulders back and drop your shoulder blades. That's what you're not doing. What you are doing is just like I said, how are you bringing your arms up here? You're just extending your shoulders back and bringing your, I'm bending your elbow. So ready, here, here, and press up. So what I would say first for you guys that are trying dips, if I was training someone, I would say, listen, let me just say you do a dip. Most people can get to here, and then they'll fail. They won't be able to get themselves back up. If you can, then you did your basic push-ups enough to build that pushing strength. Because listen, you don't have to go that far. You come to here to start. The range of motion comes with shoulder mobility and strength in that position. So basic position, basic variation of dip, full range of motion. All you got to do, come down to 90. So from here... 90, up, 90, up. So now, if you guys can't understand that, or if you guys can only get the negative and don't have that strength to get back up yet, what am I gonna tell you to do? First, I'm gonna tell you, 
we're going to train the negatives because again the negatives are going to build that strength so we're going to want to be able to come from here and just go down as slow as we can and drop our feet don't worry about pressing up just let your hands off the bar again up come down put your feet down come off the bar reset up lock out negative down once you get comfortable doing the negatives that's what you're going to use again resistance bands are very effective when learning calisthenic exercises so i'm gonna go get my band again now listen guys you can use a resistance band for just about assistance with almost any calisthenic exercise here we're going to use it for dips we're going to wrap it around one we're going to loop it through one parallel bar just like this now I'm going to give you the, the easiest, most help it's going to, to, to give you. So come here. To get the most help out of a band, you want to pull it as tight as you can across. So now look, a lot of tension. A lot of tension in the band. The more tension, the more assistance. So pull it tight. All you're going to do, hold it down with one hand on one side. This side is already locked. It's already wrapped around the bar. You don't have to hold it in, but you're going to keep your hand on there so your hands are even with each other. And then from there, all you're going to do, look, with one foot on the floor, you're going to bring one knee up put it in the band then you're gonna put the other knee in the band now look this band is gonna help you with, give you a lot of a lot of assist, assistance now so look now you're gonna do the move now I'm gonna say go do a dip bend your arms the bands gonna come down look bands gonna shoot me up you don't want to do them that fast I'm just demonstrating how much it's helping me so look down up look so I had that band with a lot of assistance on I had to pull it real tight you don't have to have it that tight. I would recommend having it a little looser. Because remember, the, the help is going to be there. The, the lower you drop, the more the band will help you. So, just like this. Now look. One foot in. Both feet in. Now from here. Because now you've got to support yourself a little more on top. You drop yourself down. Band comes down. Press up. The band's coming up. So, you can't do dips on your own practice the negatives once you get fatigued from doing the negatives come up get yourself a band one leg in lock them in and reps just like that like I said bands are gonna allow you to go through the full range of motion they're just gonna give you assistance whatever weight the band is whatever assistance that band is offering that's the band that's the assistance that your body getting so let's just say for instance this is offering me 30 pounds of assistance right now so figure, all right, you weigh 200 pounds, you could dip 170 of your 200 pounds right now. Just say, for instance, when you're learning. So then, band, day by day, week by week, we drop the band. So next time we use a 20-pound band, then a 10-pound band, and by the time you're at a light resistance band, you should be able to rep them on your own. So now, of course, that hit the upper body. We hit two push movements, two pull movements, pull, uh, pull-ups, chin-ups, push-ups, dips. You can't forget about the legs. Now. If you're a beginner, you listen, when I'm assessing a client, one of the first thing I have people do is that shoulder mobility drill, and then straight from there, I assess a client's squat mobility. So I'll literally have them come to a bench or a box, hands in front of them, and I'll tell them to squat down as low as you can, right? So bench level is pretty much parallel, optimal squat position, right? 90 degrees, perfect form, right? So if you could bring your butt down to the bench comfortably, I would say you have pretty decent hip mobility, and you're ready to start learning how to squat. But now some clients, some people, cannot squat down that low. They can only go down to there because they, they don't have that mobility in their hips or anything. So let me, let me grab something. Let me just use your bag for demonstration. Okay. All right. So what I would do, if you don't have that range of motion, if you can't squat down that low, grab something, a, a shoe box, a, a cup of weight plates. I have two, look, I show you guys right here, look. I'm going to give two examples. Stay over there, G. So look, if you don't got plates, find whatever you can find in your house. We got a bag right here. All we're going to do now, we're going to test our range of motion. We're going to squat down. So now I touch the bag, come back up. So now I know, all right, my range of motion is that bag. I can squat to there, back up. Squat to there, back up. Once I get comfortable with that range of motion, now we'll do it, we'll find a little lower surface. Same thing like doing push-ups, guys. You want to lower the surface now. So now look, if I can't reach the bench still, I still got these plates there now. Now look, I'm squatting down to the plate. That's where my range of motion is now. 
here, getting strong just like that. Increasing and building on your range of motion and your hip mobility. And once you get comfortable, that, drop one plate. Now I'm even closer to the bench. Now look, squat down. Here, I'm almost at 90. I'm at, what is that, 85 degrees, not 90 almost, boom. Boom. Over time, that'll get easier. Move the plate. Now you're back on a 90 degree surface. Squat, boom. So, squats are gonna work the entire leg. Quads, hamstrings, not so much calves, but we'll get into calf exercises. Listen, calves can be trained. Anybody can train calves. Body weight only. Come to a bar, you don't even need to. You can do them standing up. Just boom, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now listen, in my opinion with calves, we do a lot of walking. We're, we're always on our tippy toes throughout the day. Me, myself, I got small ass calves. 90% of the people got small calves. That's because I don't train them enough and I probably don't train them the right way often enough. In my opinion, the best way you're gonna get the best bang for your buck of calves, you think I put a lot of weight on your back, but if we're doing calisthenics, we don't have any weight with us, all body weight for beginners, we gotta do high, high repetition. And I'm talking about, I would sit here and do 100 clips, one shot. Bang out 100 straight and fast as I can. You really wanna build that volume in the calves. Again, we do walking on our legs all day, and they're not gonna grow like that, so you gotta give it a nice stimulus to give it a reason to grow. So, the push exercises, we went to the beginning first, the first one, push-ups. You wanna get good at push-ups, pulls first before we even think about the dips. So we'll get good at your basics, your l sit foundations, your planks, your push-ups, your pull-ups. Start doing routines like that, pyramid, just push-pull. Once the push-pull gets easy, you can, once the push-pull gets easy, then you start working on your dips. Remember, push, pull, dips. Once the dips, once you start understanding how to do dips and you start learning dips, and like I said, squats should always be in your routine. So in that routine with that push, pull at the end, now you want to start throwing in your legs. So for a beginning routine, if you just first did that pyramid routine for push, pull at the end, now you want to start doing your legs. Set to squats. When we'll start, Three sets of 10 for a beginner. And again, we'll use the bench. Whatever level you're squatting down to, that's what we're gonna squat to. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So remember, these are, these are beginner exercises. You're not gonna see explosive jumps. You're not gonna see lunges, no jump squats. I'm not gonna show you pistols yet. Because again, if you're a beginner, you gotta build that body awareness and understanding the motion. And most people, like I say, can't even get that full range of, range of motion down into a squat. So get good at doing those. And once you can do out, bang out, a good five sets of 10 easily, then you can start doing more progressive. Then we can start getting into assisted pistol squats. Listen, beginners can train these too. It's just gonna add a load. Same way, we're gonna use a bench now. Look, on the bench, one leg on the floor. Let's put one leg up. All we're gonna do from here, shift our weight forward and, lean, and lift up on this leg. One, sit back down. Two, sit back down. One, sit back down. Two, and you're gonna start repping out pistol squats, assisted, just like that. And then again, once those get, once those get easy doing an assisted, you can start doing it on your own. Down, up, I got bad knees right now. I haven't been training, I don't do pistols too often, I ain't gonna front, I'd rather just squat. But again, this is a beginner calisthenics, if you're just learning it, I did go through it, I did train pistols in the beginning, I did do all these basic beginner exercises myself, and then the same exercise I put my clients through. You've seen it in previous videos on my channel as well. So, now how can we put this all into one big routine? Once we get good at the put, all the push and all the pulls, so, now we're gonna take it into one big routine. Now remember, if you're a beginner, your goal should be getting stronger and building up your rep, your reps because you want to get good at the basics. So it's going to be, again, I'll preach, again, pyramid style training. It's going to always keep the heart rate up and it's going to keep you, keep building endurance and it's going to be a very measurable routine to always get better at. So same thing, we'll start and it'll be a push, pull routine, push, pull leg. So we'll start. One push up. One pull up. 
Dip, dip, dip. One dip. One squat. One round. Now we're going up. One, two. One, two. so on and so forth until you hit a number that you can't pull or push no more and that's going to be your number for the day and then you're going to work on completing the routine back down so say we get up to 10 listen the goal should be for a beginner to work up to a routine where you could do around the world which would be 10 so you want to get to the number 10 1 1 1 1 2 2 2 2 3 3 3 3 4 4 4 4 you want to be able to pyramid up until you hit 10 once you can start making that up to 10 and back down you pretty much have a really good foundation about to be built and you can start adding weight to your body and start also man manipulating the type of sets you're doing now. Once you get good at these pyramid sets, which in my, in my opinion in the beginning is one of the bread and butter that you guys should be doing because it's going to give you the best of both worlds. It's going to give you that endurance aspect, that strength aspect because when you're going to be starting off in that low rep range, most people as beginners won't get that high. It's going to take a long time to be able to hit one push one push up one pull up one dip one squat all the way up to 10 and again you guys could do this routine and make it to six take a minute two minute break keep going seven eight nine ten push yourself to get to ten even if look if your number is six and you fail and you work the way back down that's the way you guys should be doing it but if you guys want to challenge yourself do six know that's your number then say fuck it i'm just gonna stay on the bar i'm gonna hit seven but even when you go to seven it may be one pull up at a time. Get those seven reps, hit the seven push ups, seven dips, seven squats. Push yourself to 10. See how hard it is and how long it'll take you to get to 10. That's another way you can measure. So if you can't make it to 10 unbroken, like I said, the goal is to complete this unbroken. One, 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 two, 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 three, 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 three. Building up your stamina and strength over time so you can build that pyramid up to 10. But again, if you're a beginner and you're getting tired of pyramiding up to seven and down, eight and down you feel like it's getting slow listen another routine just to switch it up go all the way up to 10 obviously you can't do it yet your sets are going to break but now time it see how long it's going to take me to get to pyramid up to 10 pyramid up to 10 push-ups 10 pull-ups 10 dips 10 squats listen a pyramid up one to ten is 55 reps so if you're doing 55 reps of push-ups 55 reps of pull-ups 55 reps of dips 55 reps of squats that's a 220 rep exercise that's the exercise you could just Say, all right, I have 220 reps to complete today. It's 10 of everything. Let's see how long it takes me to complete it today. All right, today it took me an hour and 10 minutes. All right, next time I come, I want to get in an hour and five minutes. And again, that's how you build up and progressively overload as a beginner. Work on those beginner movements, the foundation, build that strong base, and just switch up your routines to make them fun and interesting and challenge yourself each time. And don't get too caught up with trying to learn to muscle up, all these fancy moves, handstands, or all that. Listen. Calisthenics trains the full body. Holding that dip support hold, holding those pull-ups, doing these squats, you're gonna begin the full body workout in itself. Every muscle, from the shoulders to your triceps, biceps, core, legs, glutes, everything. And again, I even threw in, I told you guys, throw in those calves workouts every time you're training too, because the calves are an under, under trained muscle for 95% of the people, myself included. So don't neglect your calves, don't be like me in that area. And uh, if you're a beginner, Follow these routines, build up your strength, and then we take it to the next level, start learning muscle-ups, and you already know. Thanks to Good Money for filming this video. I hope it's helpful to you guys. Uh, don't forget, I got my own page too, at Bar Naturals. Don't forget, like, comment, subscribe. I comment back to you people on Good Money's channel. I comment back, back to everybody on my page. Listen, I get all the notifications from my channel. I get some for his. It's hard to keep up. So if I don't get back to you, my bad. I check them rec I check them frequently, but again, I have my own page too. I try to keep up with everything that's going on on that page. I appreciate G for the platform always, for shouting me out, giving me the fucking platform to get my page going also. So, so you already know, guys. Thank you, uh, and stay tuned for more. Good looking out, Bar Naturals. You already know.